So in this lesson, we want to talk about something called gains and losses. And this relates to fixed assets. So if you have fixed assets and you sell those fixed assets before you use them up during their useful life, then you will recognize a gain or a loss on the sale of the fixed asset. And the gain or loss is simply calculated by comparing the book value of the asset to the amount that you receive. And you will report gains and losses as separate line items on the income statement. Okay? So this is one of those special things that, like we said, we're trying to get into a little bit more of the weeds that could come up when you prepare and present financial statements. So if you have a situation like this, and it's not unusual for companies that have property, plant, equipment, transportation vehicles is very common uh, where you have gains and losses where you sell things. And what you have to do also is you have to recognize the fact that there, it, this is that conservative principle of accounting that kind of comes up. If your intent is to sell an asset and you know you're going to incur a loss when you sell that asset, then you have to kind of err up on the conservative side of accounting, which means you will go ahead and accrue and recognize the loss on that asset before you actually sell it, because it's your intent to sell it. You know you're going to incur a loss. Go ahead and recognize the loss immediately. However, we don't want to overstate earnings, so for gains, we will not recognize as a gain. If you plan on selling an asset and you know you're going to have a gain on the asset, you won't recognize the gain until you actually sell it. So this is where the conservative principle of accounting kind of comes in. It comes into play on how we treat gains and losses. Now where it gets a little bit different is where we actually trade in an asset for a similar asset. So, and this is not unusual with companies that have lots of transportation vehicles as part of their assets. A taxi cab company, a delivery service company, there are a lot of construction companies that have dump trucks and equipment. Like, let's take a moving company. A moving company has a fleet of moving trucks, tractor trailer rigs in its fleet, and that's a major asset. So it's not unusual for them to maybe trade in that asset for another asset that's similar, another truck. So let's just pretend for a minute that we originally acquired this truck at $125,000. So we have an asset account set up that shows $125,000. And we have this asset for five years. The accumulated depreciation is $50,000. $125,000 less $50,000 is book value of $75,000. So the carrying value or book value of this old truck that we're trading in is $75,000. Then we decide to trade it in and we have a new truck and it has a sales price of $100,000 and the dealer will give us $60,000 for the old truck, less than what its book value is. What we're going to do is we're not going to recognize any gain or loss, we're simply going to clear out, we're going to zero out the old asset and we're going to put the new asset on at an adjusted amount of money. And the way we're going to get there is we're going to take the book value of the old asset and we're going to add the difference between the sales price and the trade-in value and we'll record the new asset at that amount of money. So you have, so you have to kind of think about it in two slices. So the first accounting entry, the first part of the accounting entry, the first part of the accounting entry is you've got to zero these out. So this is an asset debit, right? Old truck, and I'll just say, I'll just say, uh, I'm going to write the word truck here. This is the asset account. I'll put the word old to kind of distinguish it. So I'm going to zero this off the books by crediting it. I'll put the word debit up here and the word credit up here. And then accumulated depreciation has a credit balance in it of $50,000. I'm going to zero that out by debiting accumulated depreciation 
for $50,000. The new asset, the truck, the new asset will be put on the books. I'll write the word new here. $75,000 plus the difference between $100,000 and $60,000 is $40,000. So basically what we're saying is the dealer is going to, we have to, we have to buy the new truck for this, he'll give us this, we have to put cash out there for $40,000. And if we take this $75,000 plus the difference, right, is $115,000. So our debits total up to 165,000. Credits total up to 165. So debits have to equal credits. So this would be the actual accounting transaction that we would post when we trade in the old truck and get the new truck on the books. Okay. And if you have dissimilar assets, assets that are dissimilar, then there are separate transactions. It just that goes back to the original thing that I talked about. So you would recognize a gain or loss by comparing the book value to the amount that you receive. And then you just put the new asset on the books as a separate transaction, just like it's there are separate transactions for dissimilar assets. One other thing I do want to mention is that uh, when you recognize gains and losses on the books, you also have some tax implications. And those tax implications depend on what's called the holding period. And I'm speaking about the United States, the tax code in the United States. So what that means is basically gains and losses can be either be short-term or long-term. And long-term gains and losses is when you, have, you hold something for one year or more. And if you hold it for less than one year, this would be a short term, less than one year. And the tax rates may vary. So as you start to think about selling your fixed assets, you might also take a look and talk to your CPA or something, someone else about the tax implications because there is uh, what's called capital gains tax, and it varies depending on a capital asset is a fixed asset that's capitalized. So that's where that word capital gains comes from. So this just make sure you understand that there are some tax implications as when you sell, when you incur gains and losses. Okay, so that's a quick rundown of gains and losses on fixed assets. This is something you may encounter where it gets a little tricky is when you have similar assets that are traded in where you don't recognize gains and losses and you just simply have to go through this accounting transaction like this, okay? So now we'll go on some other things that you need to know in the world of accounting.